A Miraculous Ladybug Lady Noir Fan Fiction, Chapter 5. A real date with Chat Noir. If only her younger self could see her now. Despite the issue of her having to actually have the suit on, she wanted to at least dress up like it was a real date with a civilian. It's such a shame she didn't put she didn't pack for enough for her trip because her suit would actually look great with the black jumpsuit that she had back home that is that would be surprisingly long enough to cover most of the suit thank goodness the suit updates with her age or else it'd be impossible to pull to co completely cover the onesie styled suit that she had worn for most of her teenage years in all honesty she hasn't told anyone about the date yet at, at least anyone who isn't tiki she just She's not quite sure how to explain it. She can't very well say, like, yes, it's a midnight date with Shot Noir, the hero who just recently came back when Ladybug came back, and there is totally no correlation. Alia would be all over her, and w and so would her mother. Truthfully, she hasn't really been on a date in over a year and hasn't been in a relationship for two. Both were getting impatient and would maul her the second they found out. So she decided that it's for the better if she just foregoes telling them. Besides, this date is low-key. It's totally not that serious. Or at least that's what she tells herself when she puts on the black coat and belt to keep herself warm for the night. And that's what she tells herself when she brushes out her hair and puts it in two pigtails that she has, hasn't has worn in years. <laughs> that's what she tells herself when she looks at her appearance in the mirror and knows that this is really happening. Because once she looks in the mirror, she can't act like it's all low-key and that it's totally fine and normal or like any other date she's ever been on. It's not normal, it's not mundane, and it's not not a big deal. Today's the day that she, Ladybug, finally goes on an official date with a boy that she's never loved more than anyone else in the world, Chat Noir. That alone makes it way more important than anything else. She and him haven't ever been low-key. It's kind of hard to when you're famous heroes of your hometown and parade in very striking textiles. But they, as a pair, haven't ever been low-key either. They were each other's first kiss, probably their first love, and their first ones who got away. By nature, they're connected on a deeper level with the bond that only can come from saving each other's lives millions of times and spending late nights w together watching over a city at age 16. They've always been intense and meaningful and real there's no way she can pretend that this date is low-key it's you and me milady he says with a grin against the world ladybug rolls her eyes but smiles he's blurry through the tears but his intentions are clear he just wants to be there for her and she's willing to open up and let him see her break into pieces you always say that, she points out, not wanting to s spill how much it really means to her when he utters those words. Even though she refuses to say so, the twitch of his smirk tells her that he read her mind. It only serves to make her chuckle again. It's so cheesy at this point. That's my specialty. Ladybug would have shoved his hand away from her arm if she wasn't so acutely aware of how much she'd miss his touch. Huh, she says dryly. They're silent for a moment before Shot No More speaks up again. Always say it because it's true. Shot No More promises quietly. He pulls her into his arms and she rests her head onto his shoulders. Taking in a deep breath, she closes her eyes, feeling safe to like the world isn't falling apart around her. You and me, he whispers into her hair, tucking loose strands behind her ear. A faint smile grows on her face. Always and forever. She looks in the mirror and takes a deep breath. He's seen her in the heat of battle, crying underwater and absolutely crazy in the dead of night. This is an okay look for a date, right? She rakes a hand through her hair to ensure that it's not all tangled up. Not that that really matters, because it'll be flying in the wind soon enough and that always manages to get it frizzy. She breathes in deeply, trying to calm her nerves. Years ago, in her university days, even that one time in high school, <laughs> She had been known for panicking before dates. Big surprise. Growing up with half of her family being traditionally Chinese, she's learned from an early age that first impressions are very important. <laughs> Therefore, when she's meeting a guy for the first time, she practically tears her room apart 
into two just trying to figure out what to wear. Right now though, she's trying to convince herself that she's ready. <laughs> because she is. Really, deep down, she's always been ready for anything Shot Noir has to offer. Whether it be a crazy reckless plan to capture the Akuma by using him as bait, or him telling her to close her eyes as he leaps so she can feel like she's soaring, weightless, with none of the pain or responsibilities to hold her down back when she was 17, and wrecked by everything she had to be. <laughs> she's ready and she knows it. However, that doesn't stop the little cowardly voice in the back of her head, though. God, what'd she do to shut it up? As the clock ticks nearer, the pounding in her chest ceases, but the panic does not. It's happening. It's actually happening. The teenage part of her wants to run around like the room is on fire, but the adult half is shaking her head and face falling. The little voice is still there, still asking to run away from the most important person in her life because of that everlasting fear. But she can't do that. Not again. Not when he was so brave, and he said those words, and stepped up when she choked so many times on a thousand different words that she needed to say. She can't be a child again and turn her back with tears and turn her back with tears in her eyes once more. As an adult, she has to face things head on, and well, the idea of love is certainly not the most dangerous thing she's ever faced. Good night, Alia. I have to go to sleep now, but I'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, well, she is definitely not going to sleep anytime soon. But Alia clicks off for the night, and she barely does a sweep around her room before leaping out and into the night. My, my. Is this one of the rare times that the always punctual ladybug is not the first to arrive? I feel like I've witnessed something magical, Shot Noir says in the most dramatic manner possible. His hands are clenched into his chest, and there is a mischievous his smile on, smirk on his face. Ladybug stares him down, but he doesn't even move. It's terribly endearing. And she rolls her eyes at him. To be fair, I'm always late in my daily life, she points out with a grin. He raises his eyebrows in surprise. I find that hard to believe. Ladybug pulls, his, pulls a little smirk. Well, believe it. In fact, I was as late. I was always late as my civilian self because of ladybug duties. She laughs. Shotnor gapes at her for a second. Well, that's an ironic twist of fate. Ladybug chuckles, finally taking note of her surroundings. She looks at Shotnor with a perplexed expression. Are we just staying and walking around the park? She asks. Not, not that there's anything wrong with it. Ladybug quickly adds. She blushes, hoping that she didn't sound displeased with the idea. Truly, there's nothing wrong with walking around the park for the millionth time together. It's fun every time, and it feels like them, in a strange way. It just so happens that Ladybug knows Shot Noir very well, and knows that he has a flair for he has a flair for the dramatics. Therefore, she knows there is a chance he has something completely different planned for them. Shot Noir laughs. It twinkles in the night sky, and Ladybug can't help but smile. This isn't our final destination, but I thought it'd be a good place to start. He's not necessarily wrong. She does like it here in the park. In a flash, he grabs out his staff and stomps it on the ground. The sound flashes her back to her high school dates, when he'd leap up into the sky after a cheesy farewell. The staff extends to his height, and she just knows he's about to get real extra. Actually, when is he not extra? Part of her knows that he's just trying to impress her. Not that he really needs to, she's smitten enough, but the other part is happy to know that his showmanship hasn't disappeared in adulthood. Take my hand, Shot Noir says in a low voice. Ladybug nearly bursts out laughing because God, it is, it is so dramatic. He's holding onto his staff in a stance that prepares him to be ready to bring them up into the sky. Of course, his plan is to take her there in the most thrilling way. Screw a car. She should have known that he would have pulled something like this. You're so dramatic, she teases, grabbing hold of his hand, because, well, she is Jasmine, and he is her Aladdin, and there's no world in which she doesn't trust him. They rise into the sky, and it's as beautiful as she remembers it being when she was a kid. All that surrounds her is cloud and sky and stars and him. It's like a real-life fairy tale. It all glistens like glitter in the sky's backdrop, and Ladybug smiles with a nostalgic image as she holds onto Shot Noir even tighter. 
She feels his chest rumble with a chuckle as they fly over the city. Truly, if this is all the date is and the second they hit the ground it's over, she would actually be content with that. Luckily, the ride isn't the end of the night. A museum made for us, she says, gaping like a fool in front of the ladybug in Chat Noir Museum. She probably looks silly because Chat Noir begins laughing, but he nods with a mirthful smile. Isn't that kind of egotistical? Ladybug says sheepishly. Chat Noir shrugs. It's more like a walk down memory lane. A walk down memory lane. That's what she told herself when she arrived back in Paris. She said to herself that she wouldn't stay long in the city and leave once more, but that didn't end up happening because the past always catches up. Chat Noir is her past, and he is her future as well, even if her younger self tried to pretend otherwise. He is her before, and her later, and right now. Her now. So is the city, and so is Ladybug. Part of her just wants to run and avoid reliving the many years of her life that defined her, but today she's brave enough to stand still. It must be Chat Noir next to her, because that makes her so brave, because, well, it's always been him that makes her better. Touché, Ladybug rolls her eyes, but when they step into the museum, she sees what he means. It's not a display of their victories in battles. Okay, well, not, not completely, at least. Describing it as a massive timeline of their superhero lives is probably the best description. At the front, there's a huge description banner of what the museum is all about. Them and their story. It's gorgeous, actually. Ladybug reaches out a hand and touches the plaque that labels it that labels one of the most expensive stones she's ever seen that is carved into them. It's smooth to the touch, and though it's a recreation of her 14-year-old self, she instantly loves it, despite having a massive amount of embarrassment for those years. Hey, remember our first ever battle? Chat Noir says, tugging her to the first recreation. It's made from those bendable figurines, and with a push of a red button, the scene of her and Chat Noir battling Stoneheart appears. That was the best day of my life, he says with a dreamy sigh. Ladybug chuckles. Of course I remember that day. With striking detail at that. I was petrified till you gave me that pep talk. Dare I say I saved the day, he says with a cheeky smile. You did, Ladybug says without missing a beat. A blush colors Chat Noir's cheeks, and she can't help but giggle when he turns away to try and hide it. He grabs her by the wrist and drags her along, mumbling, let's, let's move along. It's endearing how he refuses to take credit for the little things he did for her to ensure the safety of the city, but she's not going to let him get away from it too easily, though. <laughs> There's a lot of exhibits and some fights that she doesn't even remember happening. Who knows how many times she and Chat Noir have fought Mr. Pigeon. She certainly doesn't. The museum says upwards of 20 times, and it sounds crazy to her, but honestly, it's not an unfathomable number. They, uh, they, they fought him a lot. We've certainly gone through a lot, Ladybug admits, but I'm glad we did it. Together, she says honestly. They're both blushing now, but with smiles on their faces. Me too, Chant Noir says breathlessly. At once, his demeanor changes, and she has no idea why, until she steps next to him and sees what room is in front of him, and what it's dedicated to. It's for Hawkmoth, and more importantly, their final battle with him. She never did understand why, but that battle had completely broken Chat Noir, and in a way that she'd never thought she'd see. But the reasons don't matter. They didn't then, and they don't now. I... I always avoided this part. He swallows thickly, and his shoulders hang. Chat Noir looks like he's a, he may collapse any second. It's, it's, it's hard to look at it for me. It's hard to remember, he says in almost a whisper. Ladybug reaches out and grabs him into a hug. His entire body falls onto her, but it's also deja vu to the day after the last battle, when she held him in his arms and he sobbed for hours. Are you okay with seeing it now? Ladybug asks in the most soothing voice she can possibly muster. He gives her a watery smile. Sort of? N not really, he admits. Ladybug chuckles a bit to lighten the mood and hugs him tighter. 
His hands grip her upper arms so tightly, it would probably cut off her circulation in a couple of minutes. Not that it actually matters to her. I just... Seeing it reminds me of how much it has genuinely changed. And not necessarily for the better. Or at least what didn't feel better at the time. We aren't kids anymore, Ladybug says softly. Sean Noir scoffs under his breath. No, I'm serious, she says with a playful laugh. We aren't kids anymore, so yeah, some things feel more bitter now. Her mind's raced back to the amount of time she stared at the screen to buy a ticket back home to Paris or looked at an old photo or even when she stood in front of her own stone statue and told herself, I'm not a kid anymore. When she was a kid, she was literally on top of the world. But the second the fight with Hakma was over, it all came tumbling down. When she left, it all came crashing down. But I think that's okay. She, they, may not be teenagers running around the nights, leaving their cities, leaving their city imprints on the walls and plucking out and plucking at the invisible strings that hold the city together. But they are adults who found their ways back to each other and back to each other's arms. I'm happy I'm not a kid anymore. We're so... I'm happy I'm not a kid anymore and I'm still with you, Ladybug says, holding her breath. It's a lot to say, but it's an understatement when it comes to them. Actually, everything that sounds all-encompassing towards the genuine love they have for each other always comes out sounding less than the real thing. Maybe it's something he can feel too, because a smile breaks onto his features. Me and you. Always. They don't say anything when they leave the museum, but Ladybug doesn't care. Instead, she just swings their arms and sighs. I, I am sorry for... He sheepish. That. Ladybug shakes her head, insisting that he has no reason to be sorry. Don't think you need to impress me, she says with a laugh. You've charmed me enough. Young Ladybug would have been too scared to say that. If she even manages to get those words out of her mouth, the next thing she would have done is swing away. But gone is the young teenager who didn't know how much she'd missed those days. Gone is the young ladybug who wasn't brave enough to hold on to the boy that she loved for more than a fleeting second. Chat Noir smiles softly at her and ladybug just knows. She just knows that her cowardly running has finally come to an end because how could she ever run away from that smile ever again? <laughs>